I think I can say hands down the best surfing that I've ever done in my life has been done on this board in the last three months. Hey, what's up guys? It's Kale Brock here, head coach at thesurfersroadmap.com. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and I've been riding Philippe Toledo's world title winning surfboard for the past three months, the FT Quad. Here's my experience, let's jump into it. This board basically is an Inferno 72 with a few variations, and one big variation being it's four fins instead of three. This one's coming in at 5'9, 19 and a quarter, two and a half, 27.9 litres. Pretty much bang on with the Inferno 72 that I've got, but obviously quite a different surfboard. I love the Inferno. We'll see how the Inferno FT goes. It rides very different to the Inferno 72. I would say it's basically a completely new surfboard from an experiential point of view. When I first got it, I rode it down in South Australia. My first impressions were, it's a little tricky. There were really special moments on it. I could feel it going really fast and I could feel that typical quad hold on my back end, for instance. There were enough special moments there uh, to want to continue riding it and explore what this board had to offer. I'm not a huge quad man. I've never really liked quads before until this surfboard. I've never been able to find a quad that's responsive enough to uh, justify the extra drive and speed that they offer. Obviously not having a center fin, it allows for more water to be propelled through the fins, which is that drive that we typically uh, attribute to quad surfboards. That drive can sacrifice to an extent responsiveness, maneuverability, because that center fin typically uh, is responsible for that, that pivot, that sharp change in direction. So without that anchor point in the middle of the surfboard, sometimes a quad can be a little bit tricky to turn. I didn't feel that initially with this surfboard because I could feel that there was something different there with the fin placement and there was enough pivot. It was just about finding the right pressures, the right weight distributions to achieve the lines that I wanted to. FT obviously stands for Philippe Toledo. Now I managed to get Marcio Zuvi on the phone, head genius behind Sharp Eye Surfboards, to chat about the thought process behind the board and a little bit of the story behind it too. Philippe is a fast surfer, you know, whatever you give to him, he, he tends to be really fast on the, on the boards, but, but the quad, he was, came, he came out of the water. It's like, man, I, I, this thing flies. So it, it was, he was, shoot, he was 15%, if not more fast, faster, you know? So now it's a matter of controlling, you know, we got the speed. How can we control? Once we started to play around with that, with that fin placement, it really did not affect the, the speed, which that's what the main goal is, and really help us to, 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 to direct the turns similar than the thruster, but not quite, and without the drag. So FCS came up with that, that set of fins that they're pretty drivey, uh, the ones that, that he's been using. And then I had to kind of, uh, you know, find the best best fin placement for it. No, no, let's let's bring the, the, the two back fins far away from the front and, and instead of uh, having them on the same parallel can't of the, the front ones, we're starting to kind of bring them more parallel to the stringer, you know what I mean? And, and back down. So it, it's it's almost like a hybrid as you as you start doing that, you're starting to get a feel of the thruster. I had a few mediocre sessions on the board back in South Australia from a wave point of view. I just couldn't quite score the waves that I, I felt this board wanted to ride. Uh, but there were enough special moments to justify actually leaving my Inferno 72, which is a big deal, uh, behind in Australia and bringing the quad with me to Europe and the Maldives. I rode the board in a couple of sessions around here in Hossegor and the waves always seem to be a little bit wonky and I found that this surfboard doesn't like wonky surf. 
I didn't mind it in onshore surf, it tended to be really good, but when the waves were wonky and didn't have power to push through that wonk, I just found that I couldn't respond quick enough on the board and I'd bog rail, I'd lose speed, I'd lose drive and it just, it wouldn't come alive unless a good section popped up, in which case it would, uh, you know, give me that juice, that squirt, there would be a little moment where I'd go, oh, that's what this board's meant to feel like. I knew that this board needed a big, clean wall and that's what I really wanted to, to test it in. So I took it to the Maldives and luckily we scored a really nice swell whilst there and uh, that's when I went, oh my goodness, this board is absolutely insane. <laughs> fastest I've ever gone on a surfboard uh, and I'm not saying that lightly I don't have any tangible measurements I don't wear any special watches or anything but when I was in the Maldives on a few four foot days and even you know a couple of days here in France since then uh, it's the only board that's ever whistled at me whilst I'm going down the face like I'm going that fast that I can hear this Like it's coming out of the fins or the tail of the board or I don't know where it's coming from but I've never had a board whistle at me that it's going that fast and <laughs> the fact that you can then control that speed and really lean into it uh, for some critical surfing is, is pretty cool. I've probably done some of the best turns, power turns, that I've ever done ever before on this surfboard just because it gives you so much speed and so much hold and enough pivot to be able to control all that uh, and really lay into your turns with a lot more commitment uh, than I've ever been able to before. And it was almost to a point where it actually upped my yardstick a little bit. My previous threshold, my previous ideas around how much power I could put into a turn have been challenged with this surfboard. And it's like, basically this surfboard was just saying, hey, if you want to push it, I'll go there with you. And so I actually put myself in some pretty critical positions on a wave that I've never been in before. And the fact that I could trust the board to hold and give me enough control uh, was, was pretty cool. A really cool feeling. Uh, and I actually think it's improved my surfing. If I'm looking back at some of the, some of the clips from the Maldives, uh, they're definitely some of the better power turns that I've done before in terms of where I've been able to place them on a wave. And also the big key is how long I've been able to hold a strong line for. Previously, I think my turns, I would have been guilty of uh, finishing turns a bit early, uh, maybe pivoting too much instead of holding rail. Whereas on this surfboard, uh, because of that drive with the quad, your arcs naturally have to be a little bit longer, uh, which on a four foot clean wave have been uh, a total blessing and something I've been really able to lean into and end up being pretty happy with in terms of uh, my performance. Obviously not as, not as beautiful as uh, Philippe Toledo can ride this board, uh, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm pretty stoked with what it's done to my surfing. One of the problems with the Inferno 72 was that once the surf got over three or four foot, it started to be a little bit slippy and I got that feedback from a few people who purchased it based off my everyday surfer board test. Um, and I found that as well. So at the bottom of the wave, if you're on like a four foot wave, you would have to be pretty gentle or even throughout a manoeuvre, you probably slip a little bit if you push too hard because the board was so electric, so alive. This board solves that issue. What are the differences and where are the differences? I can see there's, there's some difference in the tail, in the nose, it seems. We did uh, add a little bit more area and thickness on the nose. You know, so the nose seems to be a little bit more uh, fuller, so which brings the volume up a little. And then uh, there's no hip, 
is a continuous outline, and then right right past the fin, we're starting to break in into a not so pulled in a swallow. You know, that swallow is it's, it's a decent size, and uh, and then the rest was just playing with the fin placement. For me, it's going to be my go-to board when the waves get decent to excellent. You know, it's got quite a broad range. Some of these clips, you'll notice, you know, that's a pretty small wave that I'm riding, but I'm getting a lot of speed out of the board and I'm able to sort of project into a couple of those aerials. In those circumstances though, I'd probably still rather have the Inferno 72 because it offers more pivot, a sharper, tighter turning circle. So even though the board goes really fast in small waves, I just found that I couldn't pivot and change directions tight enough in order to uh, really maximize use of the wave face and stay up in that power zone, up in that pocket. I think because the quad had so much drive, it kept wanting to create long lines, which on small waves you can't really do uh, effectively. So even though I like this board in small waves, I'd pretty much I'd rather ride the Inferno 72 or a 20 or, or something else. You had, if you had an everyday surfer come in and say, hey, why should I buy this quad particularly? What would you say? In the past, a lot of people experimenting with different designs, they, they thought that these designs were alternative to cover some ground on specific type of surfing. A lot of people had this misconception on the quad that the quad would be, oh, just one more thin configuration, you know? But if you design it to, to have a, a really close feel to the thruster, and, and checking all the boxes as far as drive, you know, uh, projection and all that, then you have a, a solid alternative to the thruster, something that really can uh, can improve actually, you know, the way you ride, because I think speed, it seems to be always a, an issue from, from the beginner surfer to the intermediate sometimes, waves that sometimes don't have that energy that you're kind of struggling, trying to, you know, move it around, trying to get the speed going so that way you can, you can do a proper turn, you know, proper turns need, need speed. But when you have a design that really unleashes right off the bat, you know, and, and then you generate a lot of speed, you can really practice leaning on the rail and really carving hard. So in the end, yes, like you said, some people like stick to it and it's like, oh man, I, I you know, I, I can see improvement right there, you know. In terms of application, that's going to be interesting. I think categorically, you need to be at least an intermediate surfer to benefit from a board like this. Uh, even though a late beginner can, can uh, benefit from extra speed and whatnot, I just don't feel like they're going to have the experience, the technical knowledge to be able to turn something like this because it does require a little bit of force to turn. Certainly not a stiff board. I think just having those fundamentals in place, like the ability to get really low into your bottom turns and then be able to place your surfboard in a critical part of the wave, uh, those are the things that are just gonna help you benefit more and, and enjoy the experience of this surfboard. So I would say if you're at a level like uh, these surfers here from the surfers roadmap, uh, where you can perform consistently some nice intermediate level maneuvers and above, obviously, then I think this board is gonna be an absolute game changer for you, particularly when the waves get uh, good to really good. I think anything over six foot, uh, I think is gonna be a little bit of a stretch for this board. I just found that it was going a little bit too fast on maybe three waves that I caught in the Maldives, as you can see here, and I wasn't quite able to control uh, what was going on there. But in most circumstances, the board was just a dream, and it's, it's just something that I'm gonna keep and ride over and over again. I put a link in the description below as to where you can order this surfboard, or you can just ask your local surf shop. Um, this has been a very enjoyable experience reviewing this surfboard, and uh, I have no qualms in recommending this surfboard for intermediate level, so true intermediate level surfers and above. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know if you experienced this surfboard, what sort of surfboard are you riding at the moment, what are you enjoying, and what else should we review here? Uh, this is obviously an area we want to continue with 
over the next few years. Make sure you check out thesurfersroadmap.com as well if you want to be able to get into those good fundamental techniques that I talked about. We've got some incredible courses there and we've got over 7,000 students who are smashing their surfing goals around the world who I'm incredibly proud of. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. You.